Welcome to Can Simplified. I'm Dr. K, and in this video, we are going to balance chemical equations in four easy steps. Generally, there are three methods in balancing chemical equations. The first method is through inspection, where you keep track of the number of atoms in your head and just keep adding them up as you go. The second method is quite similar to the first, except you write them down, making it easier to track. The third method is algebraic. It's most suitable for those who love solving algebraic equations or when trying to balance complex equation. We are going to use the second method in this video and I'll share the link to the third method in the description box. Before we begin, let's go through a few basics. The whole idea of balancing equation is so that the number of each type of atoms are the same on both sides of the equation. In the process of trying to balance the equation, we're not allowed to change the chemical formula. For example, if you look at the number of hydrogen atoms, we have 5 on the left hand side and 2 on the right hand side. So we can't change the formula of water from H2O to H5O. Balancing equation would be extremely easy if we can do that. The reason we can't do that is because H5O is a different chemical formula than H2O, not to mention that it doesn't actually even exist. Therefore, we will only be allowed to place number in front of the term and not change the chemical formula. So this is a very important point to keep in mind. Sometimes we may end up with fraction or decimal in one or few of the terms. In this case, we will need to multiply through with the smallest number that will make the number whole. Whole number is a positive integer, a number which is not a fraction or a decimal. So now that we got all our basics down, let's dive right in. The first step calls for listing down the atoms. In this example, we have C6H5F plus O2 giving us CO plus H2O plus F2. So we have carbon, hydrogen, fluorine, and oxygen. So let's list them down. Notice I write them down as atoms, not molecules. Like oxygen, for example, I list it down as O rather than O2. Next, we need to count the atoms on both sides of the equation. So let's start with the left hand side. For carbon, we have six carbon and we have five hydrogen, one fluorine and two oxygen. On the right hand side, we have one carbon, two hydrogen, two fluorine and two oxygen. Don't forget that we need to add the oxygen from CO term and the H2O term. We can see that carbon, hydrogen, and fluorine are not balanced, and oxygen is balanced, since we have two atoms on left and right hand side. So the next step will focus on getting the numbers for each atom to be the same on both sides. So what we'll need to do now is to add the big numbers in front of the term. Usually I will start with the terms that are more complex. In this equation, like C6, H5, and F. So since we have six carbon on the left hand side and there's only one on the right hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a six in front of CO. And what that will do is it will give me six carbon. Now, since I added six in front of CO, I will also need to update the number of oxygen. So if you notice, I have six O from the six that I added. And at the same time, I also have one oxygen one oxygen in H2O. So that means I have six oxygen plus one oxygen and that should give me seven oxygen. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. Um, carbon is balanced, so let's go to H. Since my left hand side has five and my right hand side has two, I'm gonna need to find a common denominator between five and two. So if I put a 2 in front of C6, H5, and F, that is going to give me 10 hydrogen. And if I put a 5 in front of H2O, that is going to give me 10 hydrogen as well. So that's what we're aiming for. So I place a 2 in front of C6, H5, F, 
and now I need to update my carbon, hydrogen and fluorine on the left hand side. So I have now 12, 2 times 6, 12 carbon and 2 times 5, that's 10 hydrogen and 2 times 1, that's 1, sorry, 2 fluorine. Because I've added 2 in front of C6H5F, I have now changed the total number of carbon atoms and I want to aim to get my right hand side the same as the left hand side. So instead of 6 in front of CO, I'm going to change that to 12 now. And by doing so, I will now get 12 carbon. And at the same time, remember like what we did just now, uh, I will also need to update my oxygen count. So now I have 12 O plus 1 O here. So that's going to give me 13 O. Okay, so carbon looks good. Now we're going to move on to hydrogen. So on the left hand side, we have 10. On the right hand side, we have 2. Like what we planned earlier, we're going to put a 5 in front of H2O. So that will give us 10 hydrogen. And since we place a 5 in front of H2O, that's going to affect the number of oxygen as well. So that's going to be 17. So we have 12O plus 5O. So that will give us 17. For now, our carbon, hydrogen and fluorine looks pretty good. Um, they're all balanced on both sides. And that brings us to oxygen. So usually what I do is I leave the one where I have one off all by itself and work on it later. So that will give us the most flexibility. On the right hand side of oxygen, we have 17. And on the left hand side, we have 2. So now we need to figure out what do we need to multiply by 2 in order to get 17. So that's like solving math. Um, 17 over 2 times 2 will give us 17. So we're going to put a 17 over 2 in the front. So if we have 17 over 2 in the front times 2 oxygen atoms, that is going to cancel out and that is going to give us 17. So that's great news. Um, all our carbon, hydrogen, fluorine and oxygen are all balanced. If there are no fraction or decimal in front of any terms, we are considered done in balancing the equation. But since we have a fraction in front of O2, we will need to multiply it with the smallest number that will give us a whole number. So since it's 17 over 2, if I multiply it by 2, 2 times 17 over 2 will give me 17. And that's great. That's the smallest whole number that I can get. But since we have already balanced the entire equation, we will need to multiply 2 across the entire equation. So that way, our equation will remain balanced. So the end result will be 4 C6H5F plus 17O2 plus 24CO plus 10H2O and 2F2. Now we are officially done balancing the equation. Let's recap on the four steps that we use to balance the equation using this simple method. We first started off by listing down all the atoms that are involved in the equation. Then we counted the atoms on both sides. After that, we added big numbers in front of the terms and we kept updating the atom counts on both sides until they're all the same. And because we had fraction in one of the terms, we had to multiply 2 across the entire equation. The number that you need to multiply will depend on the number on the bottom of the fraction, which is the denominator. Please subscribe if you find this video helpful and click on that bell icon so you'll get notified on new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.